The Britannic, fitted out brand new as a hospital ship, had left Southampton with Violet Jessup on board, going out to the Mediterranean. Well, you see, I was down nursing. Yeah. You don't believe it. <laughs> we just had a brief interruption on the tape while Miss Jessup showed me a photograph of herself as a striking, dark-haired, dark-eyed Irish lass in a, in a nurse's uniform about to join the Botanic. No, so she had hoped when the ship went out to the Mediterranean as a hospital ship that she would be able to meet her brother who had been in Salonica for two years and unfortunately he went to Malta and the Botanic had too deep a draft to get into Malta. So she went to Murdoch and was on her way there. Yes, it was supposed to get there this afternoon, that afternoon. And thankfully there were no wounded men on board the ship. It was it just had the crew and the and the medical staff on board. And one of the nursing sisters had been ill and was downstairs in the cabin. Joseph had gone down to spoil her, as I'm sure she did most of the people mm -hmm. whom she took care of, and trying to get her to eat some lunch, just as she had been trying to get me to eat lunch for the last two hours. <laughs> anyway, tell us what happened then, if you would. Well, um, the thing was, she had been struck. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention that, did I? You said there was a noise, and you felt that yeah. there was a torpedo. Well, I was, up, I was upstairs in the pantry getting this nurse her breakfast, mm -hmm. and all the staff, medical staff, dozens of doctors, you see, right. and nurses, they were all in the saloon at breakfast. Right. When suddenly, crash. Right. Well, no sooner does the crash happen than everybody stood up from the table and disappeared. And it was so different to the Titanic where there didn't seem to be any panicky movement, you know. No. No. Everything happened as though normally. I'm yes, sorry, yes. Right. But of course this was wartime. Exactly, yes. yes. And um, so all I did was then... Uh, I was still intent taking this nurse on breakfast. <laughs> was to collect my pat about her right. and my piece of toast and a roll and make a pot of tea as quick there because the pantry was empty by then and I was just left alone uh, and go down to her. And by that time, you see, two two sisters uh, occupied each each cabin had two. Right. Well, her. The, the sick one was still in bed, looking very white and frightened, and the other one was getting her things, and I, I said, it, it's all right, I'll look after sister so-and-so. And I said, well, you must get up, and I'll dress you. And uh, I could see she was trembling, she wouldn't be any good at all, so I decided to let her keep her pyjamas on, you see. Mm. And I said, I'm going to put your uniform over your pyjamas, because you may have to climb down a ladder, mm -hmm. and it would be better for you. And... Uh, it took me so long, and I made her take some of this tea and a bit of roll and that yeah. while I was dressing her. And um, finally, I said to this other, don't worry, I'll take her up the stairs when I've got her dressed. And when I took her up the stairs, the young officer who was at the sort of door, you know, he, he nearly went white because he said, all the nurses have gone. Mm. So I said, well, I've had to dress this nurse, and she was quite used to, she couldn't do a thing. So um, he said, well, I'll take her along because they, uh, they're all, uh, more or less, the boat's ready to be lowered. And um, he said, what about you? So I said, oh, I've got, all sailors have their own, have a boat, you see, right. according to the Board of Trade. Right. Right. So I said, I'm number four, I'll go along for my boat, I've got to go back to my cabin yet. So um, I went along and collected my engagement thing and my plot and, and different things, you know, mm. and um, went up. Excuse me, may I interrupt? At this time, was the boat listing at all? No. Was the ship listing, or was there was no uh, evidence that she was sinking? No. Mm. Oh, well, um, there was a little, because when you looked out forward, forward mm. you could see she was a little bit down. Down at the head. But, um, but um, no... Um, she was such a big ship too, yeah. you see. Yeah. Um, 
They don't. Uh, it's extraordinary. But neither of the ships that I've been sinking on yeah. have... Uh, and very few people can say that, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Specialised in sinking. Yeah. Uh, have ever behaved badly, you yeah. know, before been, you know, yeah. gone down as ladies. So you went, came up from your cabin with your rosary and your yes, other, all other my bits belongings. And, all my bits and pieces. Right. And, uh, um, you know, the thing was that I was so keen on not using any sense at all, putting a couple of rolls in one pocket, mm. and my prayer book in the next, mm. and then turning my apron up so that nothing would drop out of my pocket, mm. going up, find a number four roll, and it was just about to be lowered, and there was a poor little frightened bellboy there that I tried to cheer up and tell him this was all right, it always ended all right sort of thing, mm. you know, mm. and uh, they, uh, you know, it's awful on these new boats because um, um, if ever you're on a boat that has to be lowered, it's awful because when they're lowering boats, it's, uh, the, uh, the ropes are all new. Oh, it's oh, terrible on the because here. one end of the boat will go down and the other end will yeah. <laughs> out, you know. We left the little bell by our halfway up the ship, you see. He got so panicky that he took the wrong rope, and it was a rope that was hanging over the side. And, the uh, he stayed on the side? No, we got oh. him to drop. We insisted that, let go and fall into the boat, we'll catch a sort of thing. But um, we got down, and the next to me was standing a doctor. Mm -hmm. This is a mechanic. Yeah. And, uh, he was a very quiet uh, sad, but I happened to have my back to the ship, you know, looking at her, and uh, it was very proud of And then as we touched water, everybody's on the Out of the boat. Out of the boat, making a wonderful dive, just uh, like to see fish, you yeah. know, the kind. Right. And standing the next, uh, I said, why are you doing that? You know, I still had my back to the boat, mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't answer. And I looked at him, I thought, well, what's the matter with you, sort of? I still had my senses, you know. And I was actually going to look at the boat, and of course, she was still going on, and she had three propellers, and they were cutting everybody to pieces. You see? I see. She was already tipping up. The propellers were out of the water. No, no, she was on an even key. Right. She wasn't even... I see. She was, that's the thing, she wasn't even... Um, the largest ship in the world at that time. And let us hear now what happened. Well, <clears throat> I, um, when I was left alone, you see, and I decided, um, which would it be better to be cut the pieces or drown? I mean, I had to make the decision. Mm -hmm. If I stayed in the boat, she was being drawn, you see, then. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful how, even at a distance, that uh, those three propellers could draw. Right. And I could feel her going over, and I thought, well, now, Which is it? drown and it's, it's not as bad as being cut the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and doing it cold-bloodedly, too. So you went over the side? I went over the side. Did you have a life jacket on? I did something, John, but I always, if your mother, well, I don't suppose I took up a boat drill, but I was always very, very strict, you know. Strict with your passengers. Oh, terribly. Yeah. Uh, now, don't put on a life vest unless you know that you mustn't put it on over clothes. I mean, jackets and that. Right. Put it on as near to your body as right. possible. Right. And uh, they used to say, you're awfully strict on boat <laughs> drill. <laughs> you know, you had good reason to be. Well, anyway, um, on this uh, trip, I was hoping to see my brother, and for that reason, I was, took all my best clothes. Mm -hmm. you, although it was only your brother, you always like to be very smart. Sure. You? And um, I had this lovely coat. Well, instead of putting the coat over the life belt, I put the life belt over the coat. A thing I never allowed a passenger. I'd have killed a passenger if they did that. Mm -hmm. And so, when I went into the water, I went down miles with the weight of, you know, clothes, and came up under the boat. And 
To begin with, I got a terrible blow on the head, which you may think is the reason for me behaving as I am today, and if you give me some food, <laughs> don't get too much. But, um, um, I got a terrific bang on the head, mm -hmm. and you know, it did occur to me, if I get another like that, I'll be finished. Mm -hmm. You know, not panic, it is a thought. Not registered in your mind. Yeah. Right. You keep, yeah. I won't let go, so I let go. I met that man after. He was telling the story on the and he panicked because he could feel this strong hand, and then I opened my hand and let go. Yeah. And he was a little red-haired, um, um, what do you call it, um, orderly, yeah. in the orderly corps. Medical order. Medical yeah. orderly, you see. And uh, he told, he was telling his mate when I heard him, say, and he said, a strong grip. And he said, then suddenly let go. And I said, that was me. And he looked at me, because <laughs> he'd heard I'd been, you know, the water. And I thought of myself, what a grand thing that I let go. Because he's a lovely little chap. Yeah. But what a terrible thing, you know, I'd been killed and <laughs> dragged him. Dragged him with you. But you came up all right, after you? Yes, I came up long. all right. Um, and, you know, sort of floated. But the only thing, of course, that nearly absolutely killed me was the first thing that was quite near me when I turned round was an open human head. Yeah. Just... Um, Somebody had to tell us all of that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and it, the thing that, of course, it would uh, come to your mind, it reminded me when my father used to kill a sheep, you know, mm -hmm. and the, yeah. a sheep's head. Yeah. I never saw anything so dreadful. Yeah. And... You could tell from the collar that he was a young and lovely person, you know, yeah. Yeah. A, a young, uh, it was a soldier, whatever, right. the, the Red Cross man. Mm -hmm. But um, I floated about, I carried four life belts floating around, because <laughs> I don't swim, you see, I I've never learned to yeah. swim. And so... Um, you swallowed a lot of water. Oh, talk about... I. For, for years after, I could feel that cork. Yeah. You know, your mouth full of cork, and yeah. you know, if you're wretched, you brought up cork. And um, this was a cork insulation from the ship. Yes, from the ship, and you see the oil too. Yeah. yeah. But um, presently, I heard a noise, and uh, a young man, who was partly submerged, called out, and he he must have seen it. I didn't see it saw the life of uh, one of our launches come towards him. Mm. And uh, he called out, there's a woman in the water. And then I looked over to see him, and he, poor thing, um, our uh, on board, medical, the, not the ship's company, but the um, head, mm -hmm. he was a man who was very much disliked, the head of this officer. Mm. And he was standing up in the boat, and he called, this young fella called out, and uh, he asked to be picked up. He said, wait your turn. And I think I hated, I hated that man from that moment. I, well, I need to say fancy anybody. And he said, I've lost my arm, sir. Well, he said, wait your turn. And he was standing up in, in his regiment, and quite all right. If I had a gun, I would have shot him. Yeah. Terrible. And this poor chap went down. He, he, he didn't survive. No, he went there because he was, I mean, he'd lost one arm. Yeah. And I, I suppose it's very difficult to try and swim with one arm, especially Lots if you've not shark, been... Shark and loss of blood as well. Yes, yeah. terrible. And, um, and, and, uh, and then I, I never forgot that poor human head that was, yeah. uh, you know, mm -hmm. and you could tell by his neck, young, very mm -hmm. young, and his fair hair and that, mm -hmm. and... Uh, yeah. And the whole thing was was too awful. Yeah. And uh, but afterwards, I it went all around the ship. This two of the sailors said they'd never seen anybody in the water, practically, you know, near death, smiling. Well, I said, wouldn't you smile if somebody came to pick you out of the water after you'd been in that yeah. melange? Yeah. You know. Exactly. Sure. I'd have smiled too. It must have been. Uh, at that, if you didn't realize it at the time, shortly thereafter, to think that you would survive thinking of 
the thinking of two great ships like that. Yes, it did. It's been quite a uh, a feeling of of uh, a special salvation that you must have experienced that you had somehow been there. Well, it's been a little bit. I don't know how you feel about um, you know the this and that. It's always been a little bit of um, of what shall I say? Um, is that right word? Uh, Oh, I can't find it. I know it's on the tip of my tongue, but... Um, you mean that you felt somehow special... A, a certain responsibility mm-hmm. for a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, something very difficult turned up to do. and said, oh, it's not my affair. That mm-hmm. Well, how do you know it's not your affair? Perhaps it's God's wish or something. You know, yeah. you've been in such a thing. And you sort of you feel you're drawn. And you can't say no, because right. um, all sorts of queer things have happened. And you feel... Uh, well, it's not interesting to with me. Well, how do you know it's not interesting with you? Perhaps it is, you know, yeah. something, and it's, it's I know quite clear. Uh, I think what's important, too, and I, I, this is my theory and one of the things I propose to discuss in the book, that, particularly on the Titanic, that those who had a job to do, mm-hmm. like your two, the two pantry boys oh, yes, with yes. the sack full of sovereigns, yes. Or Andrews and the deck steward, for instance, yes. I don't know. They were throwing over bundles of deck chairs yes, yes. Uh, over the side. Or the man, the gym instructor, within the gym, uh, showing people how to work the bicycles, even yes. as the ship was sinking. Yes. Or the orchestra that was playing. All those people who had jobs to do and somehow felt more comforted doing something. Mm. Uh, in both cases, you, as a stewardess, in the first case on the Titanic, you comforted a woman passenger who was afraid to get mm. into the white boat. You put yes, her arm, yes. your arm around her. It made such a difference. You know, she she brightened up at once. She sort of put herself into my care. Well, because that was your job, taking care of passengers. I suppose it was, yes. And then you took care of the baby. Mm. And then you took care of the, the mess boy on the, on the Britannic. Yes, yes. Uh, again, you felt at the time that what made you... Uh, feel, I'm sure, mm-hmm. more, uh, less afraid was well, that you got on with the job. It was um, that, because I had the same experience uh, when I was down nursing with that photograph taken, because uh, but just before the Britannic, I was down nursing in Broadstairs, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Prime Minister, and um, it was a lovely little hospital. But uh, we were very short-staffed, and there was one boy there. Um, he was in a, he had about 18 wounds in his arm. Mm-hmm. His arm should have come off, but they tried to save it. Yeah. And he suffered terribly. And you know, 18 tubes had to go into his arm twice a day. To drain it. To drain it. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, I knew he... Matron detailed me to look after him. Well, I had to look after him day and night. Mm. He had to be dressed at night, which meant that I had to, because he was bad there and they were afraid to lose that arm. I had to get up uh, every two hours. Well, when you're young and tired, it's an awful job. Yes. And you know that boy, although it must have been agony. Yes. Um, he scarcely ever made a motion because he, he'd asked. Let nobody with nurse Jeff, but I can't stand the pain. Yeah. Uh, you know, he must have felt just the same pain with me as anybody else. Sure. You yeah. see, but he didn't say a word, but his face used to go completely white. Mm. And of course, I used to feel it. Mm-hmm. But I think those experiences, you know, give you a sort of... They do help you. They give you strength. Yes, because when somebody else puts their confidence, you don't feel that you, you dare and fail them. That's right. I think this was very much the case. On and he was a, he was a young teacher, and uh, you could tell he loved his job, and he was always afraid he'd lose his arm. And mm. the surgeon who was looking after him said, you know, that, that arm may have to come off. And, you know, we were working, trying to sort of do everything to stay, to save the arm, mm. you know. Because mm. in the First World War, it wasn't, uh, you know, I mean... They weren't didn't have as many tools. No, or and we were today. very short. Yeah. I mean, to say, um, we were short of nurses, we were short uh, many a time, 
I had to get up in the night to, to do him because um, nobody in the, the people we had would be able to do that dressing. Mm. I mean, it was really a professional nurse's job, yeah. and not a, a, a not one of the you know the ads. Well, but the the, uh, the thing was that he liked and trusted you, and so yes, so that you yes. were the one. Because it used to worry me because I used to feel terrible because I used to see his face going whiter and whiter, mm. and I knew the pain. Yeah. And of course, I'd suffered greatly to pain myself in my life, but oh. I didn't want him to think that the, you know. Uh, I want to ask you one more question, and then we'll have some lunch. Uh, last week, when I spoke to Edith Russell, she said that after she had been on the Titanic, she used to go on other ships, that people knew who she was, or knew she had been a Titanic survivor. Well, she could, she jumped in a seat to it, too, did she? Well, not only that, but did you find in, when you were on the Majestic, for instance, or any of the later ships you were on, that people said, No. Here comes... Here comes Jessa. Never once has anybody come to me, isn't it funny, that you can keep such a lot of secrets to yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I don't think this, well, I don't, nobody's mentioned that, but there's mm -hmm. nobody in this village even, I think, that knows. You see, knows about you. Right? No. Um, but surely your fellow steward uh, in the 20s and 30s when you're on ship. Yes, when I went to South America, you know, because I, I went and rejoined the Royal Mail. Yes. Did I tell you that? Yes, you told me about that. Uh, because I just wanted to see my own hometown mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And um, they never mentioned it. Has, have you found being a survivor of the Titanic, has it in, in any way uh, given you any kind of different life than no. you thought you might have had otherwise. No. It was, to no. your mind then, as you said earlier, just another incident in a life yes, of was, 42 years. As far two. as that's concerned, nobody has ever mentioned that I've been at sea or been on the Titanic or anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that um, a lot depends on the person themselves. I you know, mm -hmm. I've met a lot of people and I've made a lot of friends that even didn't know I'd been at sea. Yeah. Sometimes it would come out if I said that um, of all the countries I liked best, Japan was the one, mm. and the country I didn't care for much or depressed me was India. Mm. You see, and I think it's just the atmosphere in, in a country. Right, right. Well, I think this has been a most uh, interesting, and certainly in terms of my book, uh, absolutely invaluable discussion with you, and I you appreciate so? your time. Yes, because I I I didn't know any of these things that you told me about the Britannic, and I think also as a general kind of uh, portrait of a stewardess in those days, it's been a pretty good interview. Well, you know, the the Britannic was. Um it, it is a tremendous thing for me. It also, um, what shall I say? I don't know whether I ought to tell you this, but a, a great um, example of what human nature can be and, what, um, and how it can fail you. Now, you'd be surprised. Um, I mean, the reason I was in that position on the Britannic was because I'd stayed behind to look after a passenger, you right, see. Right. Well, I didn't want anyone to sort of say, well, because it was my duty. That was your job. It was my job. You and would no more have not gone down to that passenger. Could pass it. Could and another thing, you have a job, you've got to do it, and I always believe in finishing my job. Right. Well, um, she was of the nursing staff. Mm -hmm. Now, we had an old matron on board, and, uh, of course, I belonged to the ship's company. She may have looked down her nose at that, I don't mm. know. But um, when uh, when I was taken, uh, we were first of all dragged out of the water, mm. then uh, taken by boat to uh, a little island where mm. the native woman was most kind, Right. And uh, took my clothes and hung them outside, and I had to go out after some 
Pish my quarters from behind the, the purse of bag to <laughs> stand and talk to someone. Uh-huh. And uh, she was trying to dry them, you see, in the sun, yeah. one of the Aegean islands, mm. little tiny island, and they were so kind. Yeah. She put me to bed and put a warm blanket over me while she tried to dry my clothes. Mm. And then we were taken uh, by um, launch to the flagship. The flagship was to Dunson. The Duncan, and she was a beautiful, you know, thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we were taken ashore to in the Piraeus to the hotel. Mm-hmm. Well, by this time, I was wanting to bring up the uh, cork I had mm-hmm. inside mm-hmm. of me and the salt water. Yeah. And um, I was given a room, and I went to bed. And I got up, and I must tell you this the joke about the family. After the Titanic, I used to, you know, moan that on the Carpathia, the big the south, mm-hmm. I couldn't buy a toothbrush. Right. And I couldn't live without cleaning my teeth, you see. Yeah. And the boys got a little bit, you know, what brothers are. Yeah. You know. Now, boy, the next time you go on a boat, for God's sake, if it's going to sink, put your toothbrush in your pocket. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> no, don't laugh. <laughs> when I... <laughs> When I went to my cabin, I was just listening. I was shown a room. No food, no, nothing mm-hmm. to drink, not even a cup of hot water. Oh. And I was full of sea water, sea water and, and uh, powdered cork, mm. which they love to put in shit. Yeah. And um, I got up and I thought, well, I must get some of this uh, cork from around my teeth. And I was standing cleaning my teeth. Still very empty, you see. I haven't yeah. had any of yeah. before because in those days I told you communion, you couldn't. Yeah. And there was a knock at the door and the sister matron opened it. She didn't say, oh, Miss Jessup, I'm so glad to see you. you're alive. Have you had any? She said, where did you get that? <sighs> well, I was afraid of being sick because I still yeah. felt... Yeah, ill ill. Yes, you see, mm-hmm. there was still salt water. Mm-hmm. And I took a breath and I said, I brought it with me, quietly, you know, for fear of... Mm. Yeah. And, you know, she shut the door, the bang went off. She never asked me. And Matron never sent for me, never came near me. She was an old uh, who a ball of war yeah. woman. She was yeah. much too old to be there. Yeah. But could you believe that, something? Never saying, How are you, have you had anything? Or are you all right? Or, and the next yeah. thing... Uh, about two hours' time, a cup of terrible stuff came out. I don't know what it tasted like. And a bit of um, bread with some terrible goat's milk butter on it. Mm-hmm. You know. Rancid oh, flour. Oh, shocking stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but I thought to myself, just imagine, I wonder if they'd been in the water and saw <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> I never forgot that. Where did you get that? Too Where did you get that? And I said I brought her with me, which was the truth, but I was afraid of elaborating and saying yeah, that uh, yeah. the good thing it was I brought it with me. You brought it with you because you hadn't had one on the Titanic yes, and you couldn't yes. buy one on the Carpathia. And yeah. my brothers, brothers always, always ragged yeah, oh, they ragged me. <laughs> For goodness <laughs> sake, next time, the first thing you put in your pocket is your toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that amusing anecdote, we'll end the interview and have some laughs. Thank you very much.